Today, we're going to be learning about networking in Roblox, which involves remote events and remote functions. Now, remote events and remote functions are a special type of object in Roblox that help with communication between the client and the server. In simpler terms, they help you send and receive messages between different players' computers and the game's server. Now, I quickly want to explain the client and server model in case any of you are unaware of this, because this is a core concept in understanding remote events and networking in general. And this can be really easily demonstrated inside of Roblox Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and start my game. Now, whenever you begin to test your game in Roblox Studio, you are given the view of a client. Now, if we look towards the top bar of our screen, we can actually see a button right here that says current client. If we click this button, it'll change our view from being a view from the client side over to the server side. So now it says current server. And now if we pan the camera around, we can actually see a different perspective where we're actually able to see our character inside of here. Now, if we click this button again, that'll swap us back to the client perspective. Now, just to clarify, the client refers to the Roblox game running on a player's computer, tablet, or other device. When you join a Roblox game, you're essentially starting a client session. And the client handles things like your character's movement, the user interfaces, interactions in the game world, and almost everything that you actually see. Now, another great way to demonstrate the client and server model is to create a script inside of the server script service. Now, once we start up our game, of course, we're viewing Roblox from the client perspective now. And if we look inside of the Explorer and we actually look inside of the server script service, we do not see any files inside of there. This is because the client cannot access specific services like the server script service or the server storage. Now, the server, on the other hand, is the central computer where our Roblox game runs and is accessed by all players. It's responsible for managing the overall game state, including things like keeping track of the player's data, the state of the game, and enforcing game logic. Unlike the client, which is unique to each individual player, there's only a single server instance that all players are connected to. And now when it comes to the server side, all of our code is generally written inside of the server script service. And if we look in our Explorer, we're able to see the server script service. So we know that from the server side, we are able to access the server script service as well as the server storage, which the client is unable to. So now that we have a general understanding of the client and server model, let's go ahead and talk about how these two can communicate with each other. First, we'll start off with remote events. Remote events allow for one-way communication between the client and the server. This means that you can send a signal from the client to the server or from the server to the client, but you will not receive a response back. Now, generally, when we create remote events, we create a folder inside of the replicated storage, usually called remotes, and then we'll create all the remote event objects that we're ever going to need and store them inside of that folder. Now, when it comes to using remote events, these objects have three methods that we can use for communication. The first method is fire client, which will send a message from the server to one specific client. We then have fire all clients, which sends a message from the server to every single client currently connected to our game. Then we also have fire server, which we could send a message from the client to the server. So if we're using a remote event from the server side and we want to communicate with one specific client, then we would use the fire client method. But if we're on the client side and we want to communicate from the client to the server, then we would use the fire server method. Now, here's a quick code example. Imagine you want all of your players to know when somebody finds a hidden treasure in your game. We can use a remote event for that. So our server side code, which would most likely be stored inside of a server script, inside of the server script service, we would create a variable for the replicated storage, then a variable for the remotes folder. And inside of the remotes folder, we've already created a remote event called treasure found. So we would create a variable for that. And then we would create a function with some logic behind it of how we would actually track when a treasure has been found. And then once a treasure has been found, we're going to use that remote event and call the fire all clients method on that remote event, passing through a string, which is the player's name with a space and then more text, which says found that treasure. So this is what we're doing on the server side to communicate to every single player in our game that a specific player has found the treasure. Then from the client side, this is how we would listen for that communication to come through. So again, we would create a variable for the replicated storage. Then we would create a variable for the remote folder inside of there. And we would create a variable for the treasure found remote event. We then create a function for handling what logic we want to perform whenever a treasure announcement has been triggered. And then our treasure found remote event has an event called on client event. And then we can connect that event to a function. So in this example, whenever a treasure is found, a message will be sent to all clients announcing who found it. Now, some other common use cases of remote events include communicating from the server to all clients that a race has finished because one player has reached the finish line. Another example would be communicating from the client to the server that we would like to equip a specific pet from our inventory. So now that we understand remote events, we should have a little bit of an easier time understanding remote functions because they're not too different. Remote functions do exactly what remote events 
do, but they also do something more. So remote functions provide two-way communication instead of one-way communication. When you call a remote function from either the client or the server, you can send data as you normally would with a remote event, but you can also receive a response back as well. Now again, when we use remote functions, we generally put all of our remote functions inside of a folder called remotes inside of the replicated storage. Then we create variables inside of all the scripts, which we need to use them inside of. Now, when it comes to using remote functions, they have two methods that we can use for communication. The first method is invoke client, which is similar to fire client, but it allows for the server to receive data back from the client. We then have another method, which is called invoke server, and it's similar to fire server, but it allows for the client to receive data back from the server. So if we want to use a remote function first from the client to communicate to the server and then have the server communicate back to us, we would use the invoke server method inside of a script on the client side. Now, generally invoke client is almost never used in Roblox development. It's generally used in very niche cases because the server asking the client something is generally unreliable because the client can always manipulate that information in some way. You might have heard the phrase before, never trust the client. That's because clients can always lie to us if they want to be malicious. So generally, so generally, you'll only ever use remote functions from the client side to communicate to the server side and then get a response back from the server. And again, that would be using the invoke server method. Now, an example of when we could use a remote function is let's say that we want to ask the server if a certain action is allowed or not. So for instance, the player is trying to enter in a VIP area. Now on the client side, we create a variable for the replicated storage, then the remotes folder, and then we create a variable for our remote function, which is called check permission. We then create a variable called is allowed, and we set that equal to our remote function, check permission and then we actually use the invoke server method on that remote function and then we pass through enter VIP area as an argument. So what we're actually doing here is when we call invoke server from our client we're communicating to the server and saying hey here's some data enter VIP area. Then on the server side we listen for this remote function to be fired we have it hooked up to a function we perform some logic and then we return something back down to the client. So that's why we create a variable here and set that equal to the method call. So now our is allowed variable would most likely be either true or false. So then we check down here is if allowed is true, then we print out you can enter the VIP area. Otherwise we print out, sorry, you cannot enter the VIP area. Now let's take a look from the server side. So again, we get the replicated storage, then we create a variable for the remote folder and we get the remote function. Then after that, we create a function called permission check, which accepts the player and permission as parameters. Then inside of this function, we check if the permission passed to us from the client is enter VIP area. And then we also check if the player has the VIP. Now, if this condition is true, then we return true. And if the condition is false, we return false. So again, once we return something from the server, that's when the part on the script will continue to run because this is a two-way communication between the client to the server and then back down to the client. Now, some other common use cases of remote functions include communicating from the client to the server that we would like to purchase an item from the store and then we communicate back from the server to the client with a response. Generally the response depends on if the player can afford it, if they already own the item or something else that we might want to check for. Another example again communicating from the client to the server is that we would like to rebirth. We'll then communicate back from the server to the client with a response based on if the player can afford a rebirth, if they've reached the maximum amount of rebirth or anything else that we want to check before instantly letting them rebirth. Now just to summarize what we learned today, what are remote events and functions? Well, these are objects that allow us to communicate between the server and the client. Remote events are used to send messages from the server to the client or from the client to the server. Remote functions are used when a response is expected from the other side, and they can be used from either the server or the client, but these are generally only used from the client to communicate to the server and get a response back to the client. And with that being said, hopefully you now have a decent understanding of networking in Roblox, and you're able to use remote events and remote functions.